Now let's talk about bundle branch blocks starting on page 32 of your workbook. So bundle branch blocks, the causes include um, old myocardial infarcts or acute MIs for that matter, uh, degenerative heart disease, hypoxia, uh, and um, this is hypoxia can cause uh, bundle branch blocks, usually in elderly patients with um, extensive cardiac disease, uh, electrolyte imbalances. Um, sometimes patients can have rate-related bundle branch blocks where the heart rate increases to a certain uh, point and one of the bundle branches, left or right, may not have fully recovered from the previous impulse. And so consequently, uh, with high heart rates, there's a bundle branch block. And more commonly, it's a right bundle branch block uh, that's, that are rate-related. Rate and uh, then when the heart rate slows down, the bundle branch block disappears. Uh, congestive heart failure can also cause uh, bundle branch blocks. So let's look at a right bundle branch block to begin with in this presentation. So the right bundle is longer and thinner uh, compared to the left. The left is shorter and thicker. And, and um, the uh, right bundle is supplied by the left anterior descending coronary artery only. And right bundle branch blocks are more common than left bundle branch blocks. We look at V1 and V6, as well as 1 and AVL, uh, to diagnose right bundle branch block. But quite frankly, I look at V1 and V1 only, and I'll explain uh, what I look for here. Uh, pretty straightforward. So um, V1 will show an RSR prime uh, configuration. So um, V1 will be positively deflected, which is not normal. So normally, we expect uh, V1 to uh, look like this. Usually, there's a um, a P wave, that's not a very well drawn P wave. There's usually a little R wave and then a negatively deflected wave and then a T wave which may be upright or, or inverted. But when you see V1 positively deflected or sort of half positive, half negatively deflected and the QRS is wide, you're likely dealing with a right bundle branch block. So um, we'll assume there's a P wave here beforehand. So you see a wide QRS and V1 is positive, you're most likely dealing with um, a right bundle branch block. So we have this little R, we have an S, and then we have this R prime. That's the RS, R prime configuration. In uh, lead six, we look for this Q wave and R prime and then a slurring of the S wave. Uh, although, as I said, quite frankly, the criteria I look at is, is V1 and V1 only. But um, this is just supportive inf information there. Whoops, it's not a very good drawing there. Now, the other criteria I should mention is that uh, the S wave has to come down to the baseline or below. So if you saw, for example, um, uh, something like this in uh, V1, then that would be uh, an incomplete right bundle branch block because this S wave doesn't come down to the baseline. Uh, so it's got to come down to the baseline or below. Now here's an example of an ECG with a right bundle branch block and you can see that the uh, the R wave here is quite subtle and forgive that my R is not very good there but uh, there's a little little tiny S wave on R, uh, S and then R prime there. So again the first thing that should stand out is uh, two things. Um, one, that the QRS is wide, so it's at least three millimeters uh, wide or greater. Uh, two, uh, there's a P wave preceding each QRS, which tells you it's a sinus beat. And three, we have this RSR prime uh, configuration. Because if you notice V6 here, you know, I mentioned that um, Q wave and slurring of the uh, S wave. Well, we don't see that here. So, uh, again, it's not consistent criteria. So the main thing we're looking for is this RSR prime pattern in V1. Again, YQRS, um, QRS deflected mostly positively in V1. Right off the bat, that should tell you it's probably a right bundle branch block. And then you look for the other criteria.